Gene Cernan. Thank you. President Cordova, Neil, honored guests, all of you out there. What a great day this is for Purdue. What a great day it is for our nation to honor a colleague and a dear friend who has done so much for this country of ours. I can't tell you how proud I am to be here, Neil. It's a, a special a day for me as it is for you. But you know, the recognition that we give Neil, the honor, the tribute that we pay Neil, I believe goes further than Neil himself. It goes far beyond what he has accomplished. Because let me take you back very quickly in a couple minutes I have. Let me take you back over four decades because we have a generation of young men and young women in this country of ours who weren't born when Neil made those first steps on the move. And a good many of them are out there right now. And at best, you were in diapers or knee pants when we made those final steps of Apollo on the surface of the moon. So let me take you back over four decades. It was back in those terrible 60s. The country was torn by campus unrest, civil strife, and the beginning of what became a very, very unpopular war. And we had a bold president called John F. Kennedy, a bold president, whether he was a dreamer, a visionary, politically astute, I don't really know that we will ever know that. But he challenged American people to do something beyond our wildest dreams and, and unlimited imagination. He challenged us to do what I don't know about the rest of you guys and gals, but he challenged us to do what I thought at that point in time was indeed impossible. And that challenge was met by the American people. It cost them courage, self-sacrifice, dedication, commitment. But that vision, that dream of, of John F. Kennedy became a reality. And this day, and this building right here is a recognition of that dream and a recognition of those people who made not just all those steps we made on the moon even possible, but all the steps any of us ever made in the space. The future dreams of those who follow us here at Purdue are certainly embodied in, in this building this morning. Now, I've been asked real quick, I've got another minute or two, why so many astronauts from Purdue? What do they do down there? How come, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's because those of us who choose to come to Purdue come because we want to. I don't know that we're special, but I do know I do know that when we leave here after the years we spend, we are indeed special. We're our boilermakers. We come with one of the finest educations we can find from any university in the country. And whether we knew it or not, and probably most of us never did realize it, but the first steps any of us took into space were taken right here on this campus. There's no question in my mind. Let me real, real quick, you know, aviation space is a romance, or we wouldn't be here. None of us would be here. It's been a romance for over 100 years. And as I look back at the Wright brothers, oh, we have an unbelievable legacy of technology. We've got airplanes that fly around the world. You've got more technology in the palm of your hand than Neil had in this spacecraft to land on the surface of the moon. <laughs> this building is a symbol of technology yet, yet to come. But I think the real legacy of the Wright brothers goes beyond, again, the technology. It's the inspiration and the passion and the dreams that they provided into the hearts and the minds of all of us who at that time followed. And this building, here, and Neil's accomplishments have indeed endowed that legacy for the future. The dream, the dream is alive, Mike. We are going to go back to the moon. And we are going to go to Mars. And no and those young kids out here, 
and fourth and fifth and sixth grade are going to be the ones who take us if we give them the safe opportunity that someone gave us when we were their age. And someday, Neil, you're going to have company. There's going to be a young boy or a young girl who graduated from Purdue who can come back here and stand on this platform and tell you what it is like to look back home from Mars. And they're going to sit right alongside beside you. And that, and, and, and that, and that is a challenge. You know, real quick, there could have been a number of people who could have been the first on the moon, and Neil will be the first to admit that. But fate shined down upon us, and fate chose Neil Armstrong to be that man. Mike Griffin last night said it very eloquently, but I need to say it again. There is no one human being that I know and have met and have worked with in my entire life that could have handled and accepted the responsibilities, the honor, everything that went with being the first man to walk on another heavenly planet in the history of mankind with any more dignity than Neil Armstrong. <laughs> Neil, Neil, I'm proud to be with you this morning, and I'm Proud to be your friend.